What's going on guys? So I bought the Logitech G29. Now I know some of you are thinking, why would you buy a G29 when you have a T300 and a Fanatic CSL? Well, the reason why I'm doing this, the reason why I did it and I bought it, here it is, right? Here's the box. I got it. I bought it. Now, here's the thing. The reason why I bought it is because I want to also test out the Thrustmaster TGT, right? So I want to test out all these different rims just to see what I like the most. And also so I can tell some of you guys, because I get questions literally all the time, like, oh, what wheel do you prefer and all this stuff? And I've used a lot of wheels. I mean, I've used the, the G25, the G27, um, the T80, the T150, the T300, the T500, the now the G29, um, and I've used a direct drive wheel um, as well. Also, the, obviously the Fanatic and a direct drive wheel. I think it was a I think it was an Acuforce, but I only tried that once. But anyway, I've I've used all these these different rims, and I feel like I I have a pretty good opinion on what I like, what the differences are, and all that stuff. And I feel I feel like if I buy this G29, I could help a lot of you guys out, giving you an opinion from the wheels that I've used, you know, is it worth the money? How do I like it? And all that kind of stuff. So I figured I would just go out, buy it with my own money, no bias at all, and give it a shot. I mean, I have 30 days to return this thing. And if I like it, you know, obviously I'll keep it. Um, you know, if not, I can return it. So I'm like, you know what, why not? Why not, why not give it a shot and see what I think? So as a first impression, I literally just bought this thing last night. Like I just bought it yesterday. I did some races with GTR and uh, we did some like online races and some of you guys actually saw I had a lobby open last night and you joined in, which is awesome. I had a lot of fun last night um, doing those those open lobbies. But the reason why I had an open, uh, open lobby last night is because I was testing this wheel out. Okay, I was testing it out, doing some racing. And I'm gonna tell you something. Right off the bat, plugging it in and racing, I was, there was no problem. I was already at home. Like there wasn't, any type of adjustment. I did not feel like I need to get used to it or, any, or anything like that. Not really, I, it really just was simple. It was plug and play, didn't really update anything. Just, it literally just started racing and I felt comfortable. I'm very shocked how well this wheel works for this game. And it might have something to do with the 900 degree rotation versus the 1080 rotation that comes default on the T300. Um, and the Fanatic, but the thing the thing about the Fanatic is you can obviously adjust your your degree of rotation. So, but we're just going to assume stock for stock. So let's do a direct comparison, more for like the T three hundred initial pressure wise, because they're around the same price range. So with with the T three hundred, it's very irritating because you have to change your degrees of rotation like every time you race in Gran Turismo Sport, which is very frustrating. You have to you know hold down the mode button and hit lift or right on the uh, D pad. And then you can change different degrees of rotation. On the Logitech, it's a set 900, which honestly in this game seems to be perfect. Every single car that I drove last night, I tried the the Aston Martin, I was trying the Ferrari, I tried the uh, the Porsche, I tried the uh, the RCZ, I tried the Lexus, I tried the McLaren. I was trying different cars to see if they felt a little bit weird or I had to turn a lot or something like that, and it just felt good. I mean, it really did. I was really impressed. Um, with the way this wheel felt. I mean, coming from what I've been using, the wheel diameter is is kind of small. I don't really love that, but it's, I mean, whatever. I mean, for the price, the thing was like 273 bucks, um, you know, yesterday when I bought it, which is, it's pretty cheap, honestly. So the wheel diameter is kind of small, which I didn't really love. But the biggest thing that I really like about it, and I noticed this right off the bat, it's the, it's oscillation. There's no oscillation. I didn't, I didn't have any of it. I mean, it, it blew my mind because, you know, I've told you that I've had oscillation issues with the T300 and the Fanatic. The Fanatic um, has issues when it's at a stop, the wheel will shake back and forth. And obviously it's not 100% compatible with GT Sport, but you know, that doesn't matter. It's still doing it. I mean, it is what it is at this current time. And the T300 does the same thing. On, on long straights, it'll, it'll shake back and forth. This thing, if I'm going like 100 miles an hour, I can just like let go of the wheel like this and it'll still stay straight. I mean, it that's more so like how a real car would be. I mean, if you're going like, you know, 70 or 80 miles an hour and you go like this, your car's not going to whip right. 
And that's how some of these other wheels are. They just make it seem like, you know, you're going crazy, even though it's, it's a straight, smooth road. So I really do like that, how it's, it feels a little bit more natural. Now, with all those positives I just said, okay, there's, there are, there are negatives. Now, the negative that I just noted, this isn't a full review. This is just my initial impression. Okay. So the negative that I've seen is that there's definitely a difference in terms of the amount of information, the amount of force feedback that is on this, on this wheel. I feel a lot more road and curbs. And when the car's like getting sideways, I feel that a lot more on the T300 and on the Fanatic. You can feel more. There is, there is less force feedback. I mean, I don't really know how much you explain that, but when I'm going over curbs, for example, like I was doing Nurburgring GP and like even look right here, like you see like those curbs like right here in the Nurburgring. If I was to run over those in with this wheel, I can feel it, but it's just very, very subtle, you know, but with the Fanatic, I mean, it'll like shake, you know what I mean? Like you run over the curb and it like shakes. I mean, you could really feel it. It's, it's really detailed with the you know, with like curbs and if the car gets sideways, like if the car starts getting sideways, the wheel will actually start like turning and you'll feel it in the wheel when it gets sideways. In this, you don't really feel it get sideways. You do a little bit, but just not as much. It's just not really as drastic. Um, that That's the biggest change that I noticed. There's definitely less force feedback. However, that's not a bad thing because Sometimes when you have all that, the, the crazy force feedback feelings, like when you feel every single bump in the road and all the curbs and all that stuff, sometimes that is distracting. You know, I mean, it's, it's cool, but it is distracting a little bit. You know, when you're driving, you're going over a curb and it's shaking like this, you might turn a little bit too much because it's shaking and you could get like sideways. Supposed to this thing really not shaking that much, you kind of run over it and you just kind of keep driving. Um, there's there's pros and cons. So I mean, if you wanted like really, really like for instance, this road right here, you see how it's like a brick road and it looks like really bumpy. If you had the like the uh, the the T300, I feel like it would be rumbling like going through that. This I feel like it would have a rumble, but just not that much. So that's kind of what I mean with the little bit of a loss of detail with the G29. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And for the money, it's still fantastic. So I'm not really knocking it. I'm just saying that I definitely noticed that. Um, it, it, 100% there's less force feedback. Um, now going into other stuff, as far as the unit itself, I, I am so shocked how easy this thing is to hook up. It's very plasticky. I mean, it is, it is, it's a lot lighter than the T300 and the Fanatic. It, it is a lot lighter. Um, but that's, like I said, whatever. It's literally just like my, how my G27 was, like in terms of how it feels. Um, you can, you can tell that the way it feels too, it's, it's not, you know, it's not like the, uh, the belt driven wheels, like the T300, but I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think that matters. I, I, I really, I really like the way it feels when it turns. It, it feels good to me. And, and I have not heard, uh, you know, the motor rattle that you used to hear with the G25. I, I have not, I have not heard that at all. And I know it's the same internals that it should be exactly the same, but I guess I'm just lucky. I haven't really heard any type of rattles or anything yet since, since I played with it. I got a few hours in last night. Um, now going to the pedals, there's, there's a there's a pretty big difference with the pedals in terms of how they feel. So the brake, there's like a, now opposed to like the G27 pedals that I have, the brake doesn't go as far back anymore. It's like there's a brake stop there. So like, for instance, before, like, let's say I had to go from like here to here, right? Let's just, well, let's just say from here to here. Now it's like from, it's closer. It's like here to here. It's like, it's, it's maybe shorter by maybe two inches, like two inches from the floor. And that helps a lot because I noticed that if I'm just barely hitting the brake, I can trail brake a lot easier with these pedals than I can with the G27 pedals. So they did a really good job on the pedals. I, I really like the pedals a lot. I like them more than T3PAs actually. Um, the pedals are awesome. So pedals are good. The wheel's good. For the money, you really can't beat this thing. I don't. I personally don't think. I think it's fantastic uh, for the money right now at, the, at this moment. But I've only, like I said, this is a first impression. I need to play on it more to really kind of get detailed and, and race with it on certain tracks and all that stuff to give an overall impression. But as of right now, I'm very impressed. And I was going to show you guys a video. I'm going to do that right now, actually. A video of a race that I had uh, last night. I did a lot of races last night with GTR, and I was going to show you some of those. All right, guys. So here's the replay that I had last night using the this wheel the G29. So this is just one of the replays that I've saved. I mean, I did, I actually have a lot of replays that are saved, but there's some cool stuff that happens in this replay that I thought maybe you guys would like. So 
This is a replay last night in a race that I did first time using uh, this G29. So we'll, we'll get into this and I'll show you. There's some, there's some cool stuff that happens in this race. So I'm using, all right, so I'm, I'm using the Porsche. You know, I'm, I'm really comfortable with this thing. I like it. On Suzuka, with that 1% nerf with the Porsche, you can really see the, how much slower it is on the straight, but I still like it with this track though. I still really, really like this car, so. All right, so this is actually some of you guys racing in this race here. You can say, ooh, little contact there, because you'll start seeing uh, the CNF, the CNF um, logo on the side of some of these cars. So GTR is doing real well here. He's just getting right by. But look at this. I mean, look at... You can see how I have really good control when you look at this rim. See, like, look. You see how, like, smooth... Like, you see what I'm turning. It's not shaking. It, it just, it's just smooth, you know? Like, I'm turning it. Like, the guy's hands aren't going like this. It just looks smooth. And that was a lot of my experience using this rim. You see that? How there's no shaking at all? It's just pretty smooth, like with that with the hands, you know? So anyway, we'll get out of this view, because I, I think this view is a little bit better for watching replays, but anyway, this ends up being a pretty good race here. TNT is right in front. GTR is hauling. He's doing good. That Aston Martin, we, we were loving that thing last night. So I'm following close to TNT here. Ooh, I should have went full throttle a little bit earlier here. Yeah, I missed my point slightly earlier. Ooh, GTR looking poke on that side. This is always a scary turn right here. Oh! I couldn't believe that I made this pass like that. That was intense. A little bit of luck, I feel like, was on my side there. But it was clean. Clean pass there. Clean pass. Alright, lap two. So I'm really trying to catch, because I got started kind of way back there. There we go. Still should have accelerated earlier over there. Trying to stay as close to that inside as I possibly can. Ooh, I must went off there. If I would have stayed full throttle, I would have went off right there. There it goes. Nice. Oh, this is getting weird. Nice, taking the inside. Nice and clean. He didn't hit me either. Nice job by him. Great job. Nice and clean. This was a pretty clean race. Tim up ahead. Right on GTR, though. GTR is moving in this race. Oh, a little mistake by Tim right there. That's going to give me a little bit of a slipstream. Loving this, this uh, CNF. CNF livery on Tim's car. Check out this thing. Isn't that sick? A little off there. Tim hits the dirt a little bit. I'm trying to leave him space. A little bump by him, but that, I feel like that was really hard to avoid, though. Tim, Tim was being clean there. That was kind of how you saw him right there let off. So here we go. We're on him now. GTR is right on Silver, man. He's just... He's pushing. Coming in a little too fast. Silver overshoots it with that pressure from GTR. What happened here? Let's let's look at GTR's view. Hold on. GTR, I'm watching you. You, you tapping this guy? <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Okay, now that's overshot. Overshot. There we go. GTR, there he is. He's right on, right on R4 now. Oh, 
Oh, it's getting close now. Both of us closing in R4. This is getting tight. She's got Ferrari, Aston Martin, and Porsche. I should have accelerated earlier there. Mistake on my part. But see, as you see me playing with this rim, I'm doing pretty good. I'm not playing any different than I have with, you know, the other wheels. Staying close. Look at that. Close to the inside. Ooh. I made that pass right there. Now, at this point, I'm talking to GTR in the headset. So I told him. I'm like, hey, go ahead and take this. I let off right there. Let him go by. Didn't want to cause any type of accident. We're, we're, we're talking on a party chat right now. Trying to get that, that clean pass. Okay, nice acceleration off this, but this Porsche just does not have the acceleration to keep up with that thing. Okay, R4 let off right there. Ooh, GTR goes a little wide. Now he realizes that it was it was a weird situation. He slowed down, let me in. Now watch this. This is this is the highlight of the race. So here we go. I'm side by side with R4 right now, right? Now look, that that Ferrari is faster. Like I was saying, this Porsche is just not fast enough for the straight line. Look, there it is. It's starting to pull. Look at what GTR does. Hits me. I rock it in front of R4 and take that turn. How genius is that? That is teamwork right there. Because we were talking on the mic, and he's just like, he's like, here, I'm going to boost you real quick. I couldn't believe it. Like, look how, and look at my view here. I'm sitting here. He's pulling on me. I'm like, ah, oh, well, there's no way I'm going to make this pass. Boom. <laughs> there it is. Make the turn, going smooth, and we got it. So now we're on R4 now, right? Okay, so it looks like, okay, it looks like he messed up there. He put his hazards on. I think he was trying to let GTR by. I think that's why those hazards flashed. So now GTR is on me. Fourth lap. I'm trying to move. I'm trying to get out. Because I got to go as quick as I can in these turns. Because you know that Aston Martin is going to come right back on those straights. This is intense. He does well here. I break too much right there. I get a good I get a good exit right there. I'm flooring it. I'm full throttle right there. See if you see, if you pay attention. Look right here. Coming in with low core throttle. Boom, full throttle. I'm full throttle all right here. But that's still not enough for this thing. This thing is just Now wait until you see what I do here. So I get in this inside. Takes it nice and clean. Nice clean pass there. And I'm right behind him. So I'm like, okay, good. Go ahead and take that. Now I was going to give him a lot of pressure. Follow his line here. And then I do this. I was like, are you kidding me? Completely messed up. Completely messed up. I followed his line to the... Now, this is not the wheel. This is me just messing up. Because he goes wide right here, and I'm following him. You see how close his tire is? right? Look how close GTR is right there. You see that? See how close his tire is to the dirt? This is what I get. See, what I did was I was following the car, and I was not following my driving line. And this is a mistake that happens to a lot of drivers. It happens to me. 
and you got to be careful. You got to drive. We got to race your race, right? He goes a little bit wider up here than I do. I don't drive like this. I don't drive all the way on peak. I usually come in, I'm usually a little bit more the inside to avoid this, but when you do that, it caused me to be slightly in the dirt and got me a little bit sideways. That's why whenever you're racing and you're following someone, you have to be really, really careful that you're, that you're not off focus and you're not driving, you know, too different than what you're comfortable with because what's gonna happen is if they mess up, you're gonna mess up. And that happens to people all the time. You'll be falling behind someone and you know, you're know you going a little bit quicker because they might have a faster line than you, but then the moment they hit the grass, you hit the grass. Or it looks like they're gonna hit the grass, then you go like too wide. So I still make a mistake. I feel like a lot of people make a mistake, but I wanted to use this video as an example for not only the, the cool the cool bump that GTR gave me to make that pass, but also as kind of an example to show that sometimes following someone else's driving line and pushing that close can lead to you making a mistake. So uh, what ends up happening here, um, I end up pulling, I don't know if you guys really watch this whole thing, but we might as well just finish it out. It's the last lap, we're gonna finish this out. So GTR wins. And I'm trying to desperately get some type of position back since I spun out, so. Okay, he went a little bit too wide, so now I'm right behind Tim again. Deja vu, Tim. I got a little bit more exit speed there. So I'm going for it. I'm taking this inside. Now look at this, this is a, this is a learning tip. Now let's pay attention here. Let's see what's going on. So look where I am, okay? My position on Tim at this moment, I completely, I, I completely have this inside. He really can't do anything. You know, like he's, if he tries to make this turn normal, he's gonna just crash into me, right? So what's he do? He's going full. He knows that, okay, Z's got this inside right here. I'm in a weird position. This is a proper way to pass on this track. If you steal this inside, you're good right here. And look, that's what it makes Tim do. He has to break and yield to let me go by because otherwise, you know, how is he gonna make the turn? So slows down and then I can make the pass clean like that. That's really kind of how you wanna pass right there. And Tim did a great job in seeing what you're supposed to do. Now it's very unfortunate he just got bumped and is probably throwing his TV across the room but the thing is, it was just a practice race, but he did the right thing on, like, on how to handle that situation. So anyway, this was just like a, a little tip I felt like I would just throw um, at the end of the video just to, kind of, I guess, kind of make you laugh there. And just to, just to show a little couple tips that, that I have examined from you know, myself and uh, you know, other drivers that I see. I, I see a lot of times on, on that turn right there, people, people mess up and that's how you do it. You know, someone's on your inside like that, you just gotta slow down just a little bit, kind of let them go first. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you, nine out of 10 times, if they have your inside, it's so weird to take that turn. They end up sometimes understeering all the way out and going too wide and you can get your position back. So, you know, it's just kind of good to handle it that way from, from my experience. But uh, anyway, guys, I hope you liked the video. I hope you like my, my first impressions with the G29. I am going to be doing a, a more detailed review after I play with it for a little bit. I need, I need probably at least a week to play with it in order to really um, feel out the pros and cons with this rim. So I'm going to do that, play with a little bit more, and then do more of a direct comparison uh, compared to the T300 because I feel like that's, that's its price range and uh, give you guys a, my opinion on it. So um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys next time.